presenters. Any there we go. All right, Steve, you want to uh, do a roll call, please? Sure. Uh, Miss Lane Gallus. Tammy, you're muted. No, yeah. here. I can never <laughs> unmute it when I want to, and when I don't, I don't. Sorry. I could see you're looking for the button, so I was going to use that. Thank uh, you, Mr. Ferguson. Here. Mr. Pachas. Present. Mr. Rowena. Here. Mr. Cantor. Here. Ms. Byron Jones. Byron Jones. Oh, Jordan Byron. Sorry, I had oh. you backwards. Oh, pre present. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Williams just showed up. He's outside. Uh, Mr. Mushak. Here. And Mr. Baxendale. Here. Do you want to recognize me, Steve? Oh, and Mr. Shulman. Yes. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> okay. All right, uh, first uh, item of uh, business 2022-07 SP Bridgeport RC Diocesan Corporation, 233 Richards Avenue, proposed two and a half story building for office use for existing uh, cemetery. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, certain whether there's anyone, um, I mean, I do see attorney, uh, uh, Vasco will give the presentation, but let me explain in case there's anyone here who uh, wishes uh, to uh, speak as a member of the public about uh, how uh, we run the uh, public hearings. Uh, first, uh, the representative of uh, the owner uh, will give the presentation. Um, uh, throughout uh, the presentation, uh, the members of the commission uh, are free to ask uh, questions. Uh, once uh, the presentation is completed, uh, we will uh, open it up to uh, questions and comments from uh, the public. We don't place a limit uh, on how long uh, members of the uh, public uh, can speak, but we do ask that um, while you say everything you need to say, uh, you keep it as brief as possible just as a courtesy to everybody else. Uh, but we do want you to have the opportunity to say, to make all the comments uh, uh, that you think are uh, necessary. Um, and we ask uh, that uh, everyone be cordial uh, in the way in which uh, they uh, speak or ask questions. Um, with uh, that, when uh, public comment is uh, con concluded, uh, again, the representative of the owner uh, will have uh, an opportunity to uh, respond uh, to any questions uh, or comments that have been made. Um, keep in mind when you're uh, asking questions or speaking um, that, that you're, not, you're not speaking to the members of the commission. We are here to listen to what you have to say and to what the representative of of the owner uh, has to say. We're not here uh, to have an interactive uh, conversation uh, with the public. Uh, that, that simply isn't our role. Our role is to listen to what everyone says uh, in order to help us uh, reach a, a decision. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, uh, attorney uh, Vasco, who is representing the owner. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is attorney Albert Vasco with the firm of Tierney, Zulo, Flaherty, and Murphy here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Tonight here representing the Bridgeport Roman Catholic Diocese in their application for a special permit to construct a 1,700 approximately square foot office building on their property located at 223 Richards Avenue, which is known as St. John Cemetery. The uh, application, I think, is pretty straightforward. Uh, the diocese needs uh, office space for, for the cemetery. Uh, they have currently on the site, they have a chapel and a uh, maintenance building. Uh, the maintenance building has a small office in it, as does the chapel, but it doesn't really suit the diocese's needs. So they uh, want to construct a office building about 1,700 square feet uh, on the property. Uh, 
Joseph McCurdy from the Archdiocese. I'm not sure if he's on the uh, call yet. And uh, Brian Smith from the Energy Engineering and Surveying, uh, who is a project engineer, uh, should also be on, on the call. Essentially, the office building will be towards the front of the property, uh, approximately in front, somewhat in front of the uh, maintenance building. Uh, the property uh, will be served by uh, sewer, by uh, septic and sewer. The health department has signed off on it, as has the various uh, <coughs> other departments. Uh, the building will be, uh, as indicated, two and a half story will be clapboard siding uh, with a stone veneer on the bottom. The entrance actually will be on the uh, northerly side of the building. Also will be an entrance towards the rear where the uh, parking uh, for the office is located. We're providing 10 parking spaces for the building. Uh, the office space would only really require six spaces, but we also have a handicapped spot and you know, a couple of spaces for visitors who may have conduct business in the office. Not sure if the engineer is on the call yet. But I would ask if he is, I would ask him just to go over the, the basic site plan if he's on the call. I'm not sure if he is or not. I can't. Yes, I am. Okay. I am. Uh, for the record, Brian Smith from DeAndrea Surveying and Engineering, PC. Um, to reiterate what Attorney Basco said, um, it's pretty. Um, Modest building in size really just suits what the diocese needs for further sales of um, gray plots. As far as um, stormwater and civil management, we're going to be um, complying with the Norwalk City Drainage Manual. Um, we, we'll be installing a Coltec system with uh, overflow, which will have um, probably approximately 750 linear feet of overland flow before entering. Um, river discharge downgrading all on the property. Um, we received comments from DPW um, traffic and zoning comments through email, which we feel that um, we've resubmitted it and feel that we've satisfied those comments. I'd be happy to answer any other questions or um, go into more detail on any of the design should any board members have uh, like that. Have you considered putting solar on the roof? Um, I haven't personally, that would be, uh, the architect has a conflict this evening with another hearing. He's not on, but if, um, I think attorney Vasco may be able to, uh, entertain this discussion. Uh, I mean, we would certainly, uh, the would, would probably look into that if it, if it was feasible. I'm not sure that it is with, with the, uh, structure here, but I mean, it was certainly something we would, you know, certainly consider. Um, do you have an artist rendering of the building? Yes, it should be. I don't know if you can pull that up, Steve. I can. Just give me a moment. Are you able to see it? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, will there be any residential space in this building for no, no. any of the diocese members? No, there will not. Strictly office. And is there any storage? Uh, we need a typical storage space for an office for mm -hmm. offices. Typical storage for an office, but no no storage of you know anything dealing with the cemetery. It's it's strictly an office building. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
no kitchen at all? No. Okay. Uh, Attorney Vasco, uh, where are right now where are plots being sold? Uh, on the cemetery property? Yeah. Uh, if Joe McCurdy, who is the cemetery, in charge of the cemetery, if he's on, he, he could answer that question. I'm not really sure. I mean, they're looking to, in the near future, expand where they're, where they're selling lots because it's a, a fairly large parcel and part of it is getting filled up. So they're- Oh, I'm sorry. You misunderstand my question. Maybe I wasn't clear. Oh. Um, you you're, you you said that um, one of the uses of the building was going to be to sell plots. You know, we, in effect, would serve as a, a sales office for people who want to buy plots. And I'm just wondering how that's handled now. Well, now the there's a small office in the chapel building, and the diocese has offices in other spaces in, in Fairfield County. Uh, some of the, the main offices actually are in the uh, Archbishop's residence in the basement. So he's, he's, he's kind of kicking them out. So that's why they need to uh, have a space that is, is dedicated for, for the sales and also for their uh, administrative functions at the cemetery, which makes a lot more sense. The uh, Archdiocese, I believe has 13 cemeteries that in in this area and 10 of them have you know small office spaces uh the three that do not are what they call legacy cemeteries which are which are essentially cemeteries that are full and really not functioning not they're not selling plots anymore or, or functioning in that in that manner are there any other uh, questions um Yes, is the entrance way to the um, this particular house from the road going to be um, prepared in any way? Because at the moment it's a pretty rough surface for uh, works vehicles. Uh, the uh, DPW has asked that we uh, redo the uh, apron at the entrance way into the building and into the uh, cemetery, uh, which we we will, which we will be doing. And then the, uh, I mean, we're not planning on, on paving the, you know, the entire roadway in, in the cemetery. If that's your question, it's basically, it's some of it paved, some of it's gravel. And it, it serves the function now for funerals and stuff like that. So I don't feel the need to have the entire uh, drive, driveway to the office building uh, to be paved, but the parking lot will be. Thank you. Can I, can I add a comment to that answer? Where the, sure. the actual entrance off of Richards Avenue will be reconstructed um, per DPW standards. That was, as uh, Attorney Vasco said, DPW had recommended that we added the proper details that meet the uh, city of Norwalk uh, standards. So the entrance will be reconstructed. The new driveway parking area will be obviously um, new asphalt. Um, but the transition from the entrance to the new parking area is in pretty decent shape. If it needs to touch up or um, kind of feathering in for a smooth um, entrance to the new park area, that will be accomplished. But we're going to uh, try to keep the disturbance as minimum as possible. But the entrance, I agree, is in rough condition and will be reconstructed. Reassuring. Thank you. And what about lighting? Um, uh, along the pathway or around the building? Brian, I'm not sure. Uh... Um, again, there's small, it's more of an architectural um, issue. I'll try to answer it though. There's small lighting around on the building itself. Um, one of the municip uh, municipal offices actually commented on it. It might've been I think it might have been zoning where they said there's lighting that's safe, but there's no lighting issue from like a site lighting where it's going to light up the area or reflect onto neighboring properties or out onto Richards Avenue. It's really probably just for safe pedestrian foot traffic to and from the parking area. Thank you. The, the uh, cemetery is uh, fairly uh, large. Um, 
Uh, what, uh, if anything, uh, is being done uh, about a sidewalk on that side of the street? Uh, both DPW and uh, Transportation Parking Mobility suggested that we install sidewalks on that side of the street. We don't. We do not feel it's necessary. We're still waiting for DPW to get back to us on that issue. Uh, the problem, the frontage of the cemetery property is approximately 1,800 feet. I mean, it would be uh, excessively expensive for for the archdiocese to put in a sidewalk along that entire stretch of the uh, cemetery property. Uh, to the south is the Norwalk Community College, and to the north is basically all residential uh, properties and there's uh, other cemeteries in the area. There is a sidewalk, I believe, on the other side of Richards Avenue. So we believe that would probably solve or the issue of, of having sidewalks. I know the city <clears throat> is uh, advocating that sidewalks go, uh, you know, on most new streets, and I know they try to uh, have developers uh, put in sidewalks where appropriate. Sidewalks are more appropriate, I believe, in the in the urban core as opposed to in the in the outer areas, like uh, where the cemetery is located. Uh, however, I mean, if EPW insists that we do sidewalks, then you know we would have to uh, evaluate the cost of that with the cost of this project. I believe the sidewalks may be as expensive as just constructing the uh, proposed building. So we'd have to do an analysis to determine whether or not it would be feasible to go ahead with the project if we were required to put in 1800 feet of sidewalks. Well, I, I, you know, I tend, uh, uh, tend to agree with you given the size of the project. Um, but it seems to me that perhaps some uh, sidewalk uh, might not be unreasonable. I don't know how long that ought to be, uh, but um, you know, I mean, we, certainly we, in front and and you know, to, slightly to the left and right of uh, of the new building, um, I would think uh, sidewalk makes some uh, some sense. I mean, we would we would certainly. Uh be willing to, you know, to put in some, you know, some sidewalk, but I think to, to have us do the entire length of the project would be uh, cost prohibitive for the diocese, but we would, Mr. Mr. Chairman. We, we would certainly uh, work with uh, EPW and, and also I should mention that the uh, transportation mobility and parking indicated that they would be willing to uh, fund part of part of part of the sidewalk but uh, to, the, to the south of the uh, proposed building. And you know, we're still in discussions with both, both them and the uh, DPW regarding the sidewalk. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know, Michelle, can you pull up the, the TMP memo that's got the, the sketch? I, I think just kind of previewing it, I think what they indicated was that they would do 600 feet to the south and that they, requested that the applicant do about approximately 1200 feet in front of the cemetery building and not do the northern piece and TMP indicated that it, they you were looking for an asphalt sidewalk not um, not concrete and thought it would probably run around 30 to thirty five thousand dollars for the sidewalk and possibly less since they're already going to be doing some paving on the property I think it's there's a sketch Michelle down um, at towards the back of the memo. Steve, can you clarify, please, that that sidewalk is on Richards Avenue and not inside the cemetery property? Correct, on Richards. Okay. The TMP is looking to connect from uh, the community college north to kind of complete the whole street, and that's what, what their goal is. So they're, they, in the area highlighted in blue is what the, they will do and requested that the applicant do the portion in red. Right, and so the yellow piece would be kind of for a future, future project. There is a footpath up there by... What's it called? Bonneville Road. Uh, Bonnie Brook. Yo. Bonnie Brook. Thank you. And then the other side of the street has a footpath on it. Does it not? 
I, I drive by frequently, I'm pretty sure there's a footpath all the way. It's, you know, one of the old ones that TMP isn't that much in favor of anymore, but at least it's something. It is some type of a sidewalk. Yeah, I believe there, there is a, a sidewalk or footpath on the on the other side of uh, Richards Avenue. Right. All, okay. the way, all the way up to Scribner, I believe. The diocese just went to a lot of um, expense, I think, to put in a new fence along the road there last year or year or so ago. I don't remember exactly. Um, I would hope that if the sidewalk is required, and I'm, I'm a fan of sidewalks for sure, but that they don't have to then remove the fence. But they probably got a permit to put in the fence. So hopefully somebody took that into consideration. We, we have other questions uh, from uh, members of the commission. All right, um, hearing none, uh, Attorney Vasco, uh, further comments before we open it up to the public? Uh, not at this time. Okay, all right, uh, then we will um, open this up to uh, comments uh, from the public. Um, Michelle, do you want to explain um, how uh, members of the public can um, uh, access the opportunity to speak? Sure. Looks like we have a couple people on. So if you'd like to participate, please use the raise, raise your hand feature, which is at the bottom. And then there's one person on by phone. So press star nine to raise your hand and we'll bring you over to talk. So it looks like we have one person already, uh, Paul. We, we uh, ask uh, folks who are speaking to please uh, give us your name and uh, your address. You'll just have to unmute yourself, Paul. Okay. Uh, my name is Paul Ginsberg. Uh, I uh, represent the, uh, not represent, but I'm on the board of the cemetery across the road. Um, and I have a couple questions uh, about the uh, the size of the building. The uh, earlier it was said that it was 1,700 square feet, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that's that I've got that right. It's 1,700 square feet on the ground, and a second floor is equal amount of square feet. Uh, it's 1,700 square feet total, not each floor. Really? Oh. Yeah, I mean it's it's not a it's not a huge building. It's 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 quite it's quite small. I mean, it's basically, it's almost like a single family residence, so size wise. Oh, okay. Seems like it was larger than that. Um, also, uh, the second question I have is to the um, the uh, angle of the roof. The roof seems quite high for the size of the building. And I wondered why it was pitched that way versus uh, a traditional pitch. Uh, so, Paul, um, you'll ask all your questions. And then um, once everybody has a chance to speak from the public, the uh, applicant team will rebut with your questions. You could just ask them in order and then we'll get back to all of them. Thank you. That's my two questions. OK. And then there's one other person on a phone. Again, press star nine to raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Don't see a hand, so. All right, let's offer uh, that opportunity to speak one more time and um, then we'll turn it back to Attorney Vasco. Okay, um, Attorney Vasco, um, we'll turn it back to you. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I've already answered the uh, question regarding the uh, size of the building. As to the uh, roof design, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why it was designed that way. The architect, unfortunately, is not on the call this evening, but I don't think it's uh, out of uh, character with the neighborhood. I mean, it's the it's it's a typical roof design. And it's not you know something out of the or out of the ordinary. I don't believe, but. Any other questions uh, for Attorney Vasco uh, or for Mr. Smith? Um, if not, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Okay, uh, public hearing is, uh, is closed. Uh, thank you, Attorney uh, Vasco, uh, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll move on to action. Um, I know that um, we do have some um, uh, proposed language to both uh, approve uh, and uh, deny this application. Michelle, can you put that up for us? And while you're doing that, um, um, I guess I'd ask uh, Nick, um, how uh, you think we uh, should address uh, the issue of uh, solar panels on the roof? Yeah, I think we can use the language you've used previously if it's feasible or whatever staff to determine with the applicant seems like a, an appropriate use here. If others agree. All right. Uh, can, can I uh, uh, have a motion to either approve or uh, deny the uh, applicant? I would move to approve. Um, Richard, is that uh, coming from you? Sorry. That's coming you? from me, yes. Oh, okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Tammy. Tammy uh, seconds. Uh, any further discussion uh, before we vote on this matter? I just wondered, what would the standard language be for um, the solar? Typically, I think it usually says close to what Nick had said, that if it is found feasible that um, the applicant look into getting solar panels. Um, I believe that, that the, I believe the applicant said that this um, house faces north. So if there was going to be any solar panels, I guess it would be on the back or the side. I don't remember how the roof line went. Well, the south side at the moment on the die on the drawing is very clearly totally flat, um, right to the peak. So I'm, I would think by conventional standards, I know it's very difficult to put solar in, but still something we could uh, ask for. Could we consider? Well, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't. I just always um, feel that you know, even though. Um, solar is wonderful for the environment and all the rest of it. You know, there has to be some consideration given to aesthetics too. I mean, that was, I thought was a pretty nice looking building. Um, and if it's next to the works department, then maybe it could go on the roof line there. I don't know. Uh, totally yeah, I, I, I think there are a number of concerns, uh, especially if we use the language, you know, if uh, practical. Uh, one, of course, is uh, cost. Um, and it seems to me uh, aesthetics uh, come into that, uh, uh, that mixture as well. Um, and, uh, you know, issues like payback and so forth. Um, typically, when we do this, we, we leave that conversation um, uh, up to the staff, typically be between the applicant and the staff uh, to uh, reach a final decision on that. Um, is, is staff comfortable with that? I was trying to find, it might take me another minute. I was just trying to find the exact language we've used on um, previously on a few of applications. I know it was kind of paraphrasing, like as Michelle indicated, the applicant shall uh, evaluate the feasibility of installing solar uh, and, and if deemed infeasible shall 
you know, put some kind of letter or report back to the commission indicating why that, that can't be done. I think this is our first time suggesting this language for such a small project, though. That's the only reason I was thinking about it. On the apartment buildings, it's, uh, you know, cost of doing business. I don't, I didn't think it was that significant, but this might be. Steve Kleppen, is it customary that planning and zoning is now asking all applicants, whether it's residential or commercial, to consider solar? Uh, I mean, I think you have the ability to do that. Uh, the new state enabling, enabling legislation gives you some more teeth in that front. Um, so if, if you feel that's something that you want to see on those projects, I know the, there are discussions, you know, whether we should make that standard requirement within the zoning regulations. Um, should it be a requirement within, um, like through a city ordinance? So that is being discussed on a kind of a broader level. Okay, thank you, but it's not nothing mandatory. There, there's nothing currently on the books that requires it. Because otherwise it would seem to me um, that we are asking this of the applicant rather at the last minute and that might really throw them a curveball. I'm not trying to be pro or con in my comment, but you know, how, if I were the applicant, I think I might wish I had known that, you know, a month ago when I put my plans together or whatever it was, that's all. I, 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 you know, I think Tammy, what, uh, what you're saying, uh, does someone have someone there who's, uh, ah, thank you, Nick. Uh, um, I, I, I think uh, you're both making reasonable points. Um, however, I don't think asking the applicant uh, to look at the feasibility uh, represents a particular hardship. Um, you're right. We we it, it's a shame that we didn't um, know and uh, couldn't have asked this question a good deal earlier in the process. Um, but uh, to uh, to have their um, uh, engineering firm and or their architect to look at uh, uh, the issue, as I say, um, is is not a particular hardship. Uh, but final decision. Uh, does rest with um, uh, the uh, commission as to whether we uh, request that. I did find the language, if I could. Please. Get strike. the right document. Nope, I'm going to strike out. If I, find, I have the document, but I just have so many windows open that trying to okay. narrow it down is going to be tricky. But keep going. If, I'm sorry. I have a comment. Go ahead, Mike. Mike here. Uh, so uh, I agree with the intent of Nick's request uh, uh, and the language could be flexible here. Sure, because it's just, you're incur it's a carrot and stick. I don't think we're ready to use a stick to make people right. do uh, solar, but you, you know, a suggestion is the carrot approach. Uh, the, um, uh, but, the, but I appreciate the intent for sure. And, uh, I, uh, of course, I'm always promoting sidewalks and, uh, and that's very important, uh, but I see I'm sympathetic to the scale of the sidewalk that was requested in uh, relationship to the size of this project. So, uh, and, you know, a church is a nonprofit, at least the last time I checked, uh, <laughs> they are, <laughs> but um, it seems, it seems, so I'm, I see both sides of it, so I would just encourage them to do as much sidewalk as they feel is feasible. Pretty much the same language as the solar, but I'm not prepared to insist on anything right now. I, I'm I'm ready to move this forward uh, with you know a condition, uh, whether it's in the language or not. But you know whatever the DPW comes back for the sidewalk, but hoping that they would be understanding of the the app the applicant. It's not, it's not a big commercial office building, you know, here that's going in. So, and, and I also wanted to say the steep roof is uh, to me uh, reminiscent uh, or kind of references, <clears throat> to use a better word, uh, historic cemetery architecture, which is usually Gothic, uh, Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn comes to mind. Uh, and I thought this building actually looked 
like it belonged in one of these 19th century Gothic cemeteries, albeit, you know, it's gonna be um, updated, but, but the steep roof is part of that instead of it looking like a tract house plopped down in the middle. So I'm glad it has some character uh, and that it has a, you know, visual impact, uh, an attractive visual impact on the, on the cemetery. Uh, it's almost like a focal point. Uh, be something attractive. So I'm, I'm all, I, I have no issue with anything else except what I just said. Hey, let me go back uh, to what Mike uh, uh, said about uh, the sidewalk uh, and uh, ask the uh, commission members, if you want to pass on a comment to uh, TNP um, re regarding um, uh, their request of the applicant to install sidewalks, and that is uh, not to overburden uh, the applicant uh, with a requirement uh, for um, a 1,200 uh, foot sidewalk. We we can't we can't tell TNP what to do, but we we certainly can make a suggestion to them. I I absolutely agree. I think with what uh... Mike was saying that, you know, the applicants not coming in and asking to put up 1300 apartments on 31 acres, they're asking for a 1700 square foot office building to manage the existing use. So I, I just think that having to put in 1200 feet or even 800 feet, 800 feet or 600 feet of sidewalk is, is a huge expense. Um, I mean, the applicant volunteered that they would, uh, you know, do something on either side of it, which I think would be appropriate for visitors. Um, but again, like you said, we can't tell TMP what to do, but that would be my comment. I agree with you, Richard. Steve, can we uh, include those uh, uh, two recommendations, the one regarding solar and uh, the one regarding the sidewalk? Can you provide a little clarity on what you're either putting on as a condition or, or as a like kind of a whereas clause regarding the, the sidewalk? Because I'm, I, I think the only thing I would advise against is then having them construct 100 feet of sidewalk because then you have a sidewalk that just stops and that doesn't do any good for anybody. So that kind of defeats the purpose. Steve, is the, is the cemetery a different a special zone. I'm looking, I'm trying to look on a map. It does it have, you know, it's not residential, right? Um, so does it have a different zone, a different requirement? No, it, it's just a special permit use in the, the particular zone it's in. Oh, I see. Doesn't the cemetery, don't you, don't you like drive into it and go yeah. to whatever grave you're going to go to? Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't, um, walk down the street to go to it, I don't think. No, I think it's more for just general pedestrians going down Richards Avenue. Oh, I, un I, un I understand the, the, the request, I, I get it. And, you know, I think it's, it's a good rule. But like I said before, this, this is not new construction in the sense that the 30 acres, the 31 acres is being developed. It's a, it's a small accessory use for an existing uh for an existing use right, but I, I get it i understand that you know you don't want a sidewalk to know where would the 600 feet that tmp is going to do end up it's it's on the to the south it connects the southern piece of southern border of the cemetery site down to the college so does it serve a function if it was there by itself well, it connects that piece, and then then there, you know, the idea is when the next piece develops, the you know the, the sidewalk continues and connects. Well, isn't it fair to say that a cemetery is going to remain a cemetery for in perpetuity? The community college could possibly change use, and they have a sidewalk on both sides, and they have a crosswalk at the intersection, and then there's a sidewalk on the east side of Richards Avenue all the way up to Matthews. Oh, excuse me, up to Scribner Avenue, up to St. Matthews, then they could paint a crosswalk because there's a sidewalk on the other side of the street again, going up toward Temple Shalom and the West Congregational Church. 
Steve, I need some guidance, if I may. The TMP report clearly states what should be done uh, 600 feet south and the rest should be done by St. John's Cemetery, unless I'm reading incorrectly. Right, the 1,200 feet, and then they That's right. they, <coughs> they left the, the remaining approximately 600 feet to the north for a, a future project. So I'm not quite sure what, what is left to be done. That's all I'm asking. Uh, I'm 12, not, it sounds like it's 1,200 feet. Right, um, that's what their, their TMP's request slash recommendation is. And again, I support the, the need because there's a neighborhood, uh, I wouldn't call it dense, but you know, there are a lot of houses north. And we're all, you know, certainly during the pandemic, we became aware of how important walking is. But I think patterns have changed where, you know, we just see, we're trying to get people to walk more and you can walk then all the way down to, you know, route one to the commercial strip and do your shopping. And I mean, there's, there's, I don't think we need to debate with the need for the sidewalk, but is it, it, it seems unrelated to this application in terms of there's no connection between the sidewalk and the, and the building. You know, it's not, it's not as the attorney said, it's not the urban core where the users of this office building would be needing a sidewalk. So that's why I, I see both sides of this and I'm not, I, I'm what, I would like to move this forward without that requirement. Uh, just because I think it's uh, it, it seems extreme in this situation, and and I'll just add that this uh, cemetery is quite popular. Uh, people are dying to get into it. I think. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you had it, Mike. You just had Steve, it. Steve, can it. you can you mute Mike for the rest of the meeting? <laughs> um, I have a question. How many people will be employed in this office building? That was my question. Yeah, uh, the applicant can't speak now. Can't Michelle, <laughs> Michelle, do you have the narrative? Maybe it's, it's indicated in the applicant's narrative. I'm not sure if I gave a specific number. <clears throat> I guess based on that size, it's not going to be a very large number. Right. Well, they're required to have, uh, uh, Attorney Vasco said, uh, six spaces, and they're going to have 10. Um, I, I don't know the zoning regs well enough to uh, know how many employees that may mean. I think it's one per 300 square feet. That's probably where the six comes from, right? Mm -hmm. I, but, I, my uh, one comment about this, sorry, I mean, I, I talk to anybody if I did, but you know, the, the idea of having people here every day to me is a, is a plus for uh, security reasons and, uh, and just feeling like, you know, cemeteries were the original parks, uh, not to get too uh, into detail here, but the, but the parks in New York became so popular that uh, it inspired Central Park and Prospect Park. Uh, that's what Olmsted decided because all the people just went into the cemetery to walk around uh, and enjoy the fresh air. But anyway, this is a park uh, as well as a cemetery. It's open space. And to have a activity in it to me just adds, you know, that with this attractive building, uh, with a few cars coming in and out now and then is completely and you know, almost not impactful at all. Well, what I'm what I'm hearing um, is that uh, we should not try to address uh, the issue of the sidewalks um, because we, what we'll be suggesting is a sidewalk a sidewalk to nowhere. Uh, so that would um, mean um, I'd ask. Uh, uh, that we vote on um, um, the original uh, language with the addition of uh, the requirement to take a look at uh, the possibility of uh, solar uh, on top of the building. Uh, I know uh, uh, Mr. Williams did have his hand up. The only thing I'd say, if you wanted to do something you, back to your, not to belabor this, but if you wanted to do something back to your Original sentiment, maybe they could sit down and discuss something with DPW and TMP and you know pool resources to do another portion. Maybe TMP's got another 
pool of money, they can extend it up a certain degree. That's what I was wondering. I mean, if 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 the applicant is still discussing it with TMP, so they may change their mind or alter their suggest or alter their uh, request. I, I I don't exactly see what's wrong with our putting our two cents into that conversation. Because I I feel the way that I said before, except now I want to withdraw saying that they should put sidewalks on a little bit on each side of the building. Right. That, that seems to be like a waste. Right. It would, it would be better to do it all at once, right? Because you're going to have to yeah. I'm sorry, Darius, you had, a, you had something you wanted to say? Yes, but the good thing about going last is most times everyone already says things for you. So, so I, <laughs> I agree with, with everyone in their sentiments. Actually, uh, my grandfather was laid to rest at the cemetery back in August. So I have spent quite a bit of time there and I know the layout well. And, you know, I do agree that I would love to have sidewalks there because I drive by all the time. I drive by on my way to go to Connecticut Avenue. And so I do see that there are pedestrians there. There is not a lot of heavy foot traffic, especially considering where we are now uh, in the pandemic and people are starting to do other things. Um, and so I would just say, maybe we should just start to have the conversation about the sidewalks. And I, it may be a bit uh, unfeasible for the cemetery to take this on, to take on 1200 uh, feet of sidewalks. but. You know, I definitely think that we should push this through because it is, I don't think that this is um, consequential enough to really keep pushing off. Thank you. All right, Steve, can we uh, leave it to uh, staff um, to um, set up the meeting between uh, uh, Attorney Vasco and TNP? Um, to have that conversation regarding um, uh, sidewalks. So, so you'd like us to add in a condition that the applicants shall meet with DPW and TMP to discuss the uh, partnering on construction of a sidewalk? Right. All right, there is zero teeth to that, but I can- add I understand. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have a uh, uh, motion uh, and second to uh, uh, approve the project with uh, those two additions uh, the, regarding the sidewalk and uh, regarding uh, solar on the roof. Um, let's, uh, let's do this by a roll call. Okay, uh, who would, just to we clarify, I think you, I'm just gonna head count because you may need a seat. One alternate may not be seated. Let me just clarify that. Um, or you maybe only had, yeah. Yeah, we're Steve, sure too. Um, Steve Ferguson still on? I don't see him on video. He yes, is. he is. Okay, he's not on yes, my I'm screen. I'm here, guys. So. I'm here. Okay, so Steve is still on. Yes. Yep. Now I've got to recount. So sorry. And Tammy is off my screen too. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. I just don't have the video on. So you have 10, so um, you'll need to see two alternates. And uh, that would be uh, Darius and Hector. And um, we'll make sure that uh, uh, JJ, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, can vote uh, on uh, the next item. Okay. Now that I got it, if I'm going to hopefully get everybody here. <laughs> Um, Mr. Pachas. Yes. So in favor of the motion, I should clarify. Um, Mr. Cantor? Yes. Mr. Rowena? Yes. Mr. Williams? You muted, Darius. Oh, yes. Mr. Baxendale? Yes. Mr. Mushak? Yes. Mr. Ferguson? Yes. Ms. Lane Gallus? Yes. And Mr. Schulman? Yes. That was unanimous. Okay. Uh, Attorney Vasco, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's move on uh, to uh, uh, next item 20, uh, 22 06 CAM. 
uh, Tim Rath, Nine Twilight Place, demolish existing single family and reconstruct new single family residence. Mr. Rath, uh, uh, you can uh, start your video. Um, yes. Um, Okay, there you are. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I appreciate you taking your time to review my application. I've been a Norwalk resident for over 38 years. I've lived in Harborview the entire time. My son went to Norwalk Public Schools and recently moved back to Harborview and purchased the house next door to the house he grew up in. My plan is to replace an existing single family house that has fallen into disrepair and replace it with a new home for my family of a similar size. The new home will be flood compliant and all mechanicals will be above the required flood height. The stairs and crawl space and, and coverings will also be <coughs> breakaway as per re regulations. Um, an extensive runoff system with a coltex will be used to collect all the rainwater from the driveway and every other place it was required by uh, regulations. All the pool mechanicals will be placed above the floodplain and secured to a platform. Um, the pool has been certified by an engineer to be all to meet all FEMA flood zone requirements. And the site before I start any construction will be fully protected by any uh, before any construction starts with the required silt fence, et cetera. Um, I have sought and received approvals from first and foremost my neighbors to make sure they're okay with what I was doing. South Norwalk Electric, Norwalk Department of Public Works, Norwalk Harbor Commission, Norwalk Department of Health, Norwalk Shellfish Commission, and the state DEEP. Um, I'd love to hear any questions you might have about my application. It's pretty straightforward. It's a single family house and I've submitted the plans and all the requirements, I, I believe. Thank you for your time, sir. Any questions uh, for Mr. Rath? Only a comment, it looks very nice. It's very nicely designed and well-situated, Mr. Rath. Well, thank you, sir. We put it on the same place the old house was, and it's a beautiful piece of property, in my opinion. So I want to do it right. I do have a question, um, Mr. Rath. This is Tammy. On the survey map, it shows a detached garage structure, but then when you scroll down through the rest of the pages, that building doesn't appear. Is there a second structure? Yes, there's been an existing two car garage with a small uh, studio apartment above it that is existing and we don't plan on doing anything with it. It uh, predates zoning and it's been there since the twenties. So no, we do not plan on doing anything with that except maybe painting it and fixing it up a little bit, but no, that'll stay. That'll remain. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, actually, Lou, if I could follow up with Steve Kleppen. So Steve, is that because that structure is already in place, it is allowed to stay? Correct. Yeah, that, that you know, anything, it's, since it's legally non-conforming can remain. Right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Uh, if not, uh, this is a uh, straightforward uh, approval. Uh, can I have a, a motion to uh, approve? So approved. So proposed. Okay. Brian uh, has a motion. I'm sorry, I'll you second. seconded? Steve Ferguson. Okay. Steve Ferguson has uh, seconded. Uh, uh, just need to... Oh, I'm sorry. Either Darius uh, or Hector. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll uh, knock Darius out of this one uh, and uh, put in uh, JJ. Uh, any other questions uh, before we go to a vote? Uh, I think we... Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I was just asking. I, I read the Harbor Management letter and they recommended in there some assurances around maintenance of cash basins and sump pumps, all that. Should that get into uh, the... 
Yeah, we have a, we we have filed a complete plan for the maintenance of the Cotex system and and all the drainage system. It's been filed with the uh, DPW and the zoning department. Yes, so we have just a even, just even yes. that point sort of moot to put that in the the resolution. Yeah, the the material the the application materials go with the approval, so they should you know follow suit on that. Yeah, it's all in there. The maintenance program's in there. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's do this one by show of hands. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Tammy, was that the equivalent of a hand raise? Yes, aye. Okay. Thank you. So uh, it's uh, approved unanimously. Right. Thank you, Thank you very Pratt. Thank you very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. You have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, next item, 2022-05R um, uh, slash M slash SP, Merit Station Norwalk. We're not going to take up this evening. Uh, the applicant is uh, not with us. So uh, we'll, we'll go right, right back uh, to Steve uh, Kleppen, 2022-09R um, slash uh, M. Planning and Zoning Commission zoning regulation and map amendment for industrial uses and zones. This is a continuation uh, of the uh, conversation uh, uh, that uh, we had at our last meeting. Okay, can you guys um, see my screen? Well yeah, enough? we can see it. I, I, that's better. All right. Okay, so just to there were a few things that I took note of um, when we talked about this at the last meeting, and uh, I think a lot of it stemmed from reference on uh, size of properties that we were talking about in terms of the contractor yards and also looking at uh, building size so we can get a comparison about what's being proposed versus something that you're familiar with. So I you know, tried to find a few contractor yards which were in different sizes that might be you know, in areas that are a little more well-traveled. So I looked at a few in South Norwalk, um, three in particular. So um, on the left-hand side is 54 and 56 uh, Chestnut Street, right across the street is the, um, where the Space Cat Brewery is. And I reference most things by breweries if I can. And the other one is a little bit to the east, which is 126 South Main, which is kind of in that unique little triangular piece of property. And just to the north, just for reference, is Concord Street. Um, and up in the upper left-hand corner is the southern part of the South Norwalk train station. That's jumping around a little bit, sorry about that. Here's just a little bit of a, a blow up view of um, the sites again, just to take a peek, so just for help for orientation. The first yard, which is, and I'll back up, 54 Chestnut Street, which is the northern one. So it's on the corner of Merritt and Chestnut. That parcel is 0.46 of an acre. So it's just about almost exactly uh, 20,000 square feet, which is the, you know, the draft uh, size that we, we uh, put into the regulations for requiring uh, additional review. Here's an overhead um, aerial shot of it. The, you know, the yard doesn't look like it's changed in a lot of times. They've had storage of, uh, you know, trucks and they have some earth processing material, but that's what kind of like what a half acre size um, yard looks like. Just to the south of that, I'm sorry. And here's just a street view image of uh, what it looks like just for orientation purposes. And as you can see, we do require um, landscaping around the perimeter to help um, screen those uses. The next piece is um, 56 Chestnut Street, which is directly south. It's a little smaller at 0.42 acres, which is about 18,000 square feet. It's another yard where there's some truck stored and some materials stored. Um, and again, you'll see the landscaping around that. Um, and here's a street view of it. Uh, this one doesn't have as much landscaping on the street edge, but does have some along its northern perimeter and its southern side, but nearly nothing to the um, east side. Further east here is um, a larger contractor's yard. There's actually two parcels here. This um, piece, which is outlined in red here, I'm not sure what kind of shape that is, some kind of uh, 
polygon here, but that does have um, 1.15 acres, which is about 50,000 square feet. And the, the smaller piece, which is 134, it's that triangular piece here that has that large uh, black tarp over it. That is a small piece of 0.13 of an acre. Um, and it looks like, you know, they just aren't combined, but it looks like it functions in unison with the rest of the property. One thing you'll notice about this yard is, even though it's, it's a lot larger, um, you know, it, it's, a, and if you've ever been by there, it's, it's a well-maintained yard. They're not dragging um, mud and dirt out into the street. It's a pretty well-ordered and organized uh, facility. Here's a street view, and this is from uh, looking at that, that large tarped area, which is, and you can see that the residential areas around it, but here's the large tarped area. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell for the contractor yards. Um, did you have further questions on, in terms of like what we're talking about in terms of size and scope for these yards? Nope, okay. Um, and the other question that came up was when we're looking at some of these new um, building heights and, and what, are, what are some building heights that we have in the city? So just to give folks some comparison when we're talking about allowing um, buildings up to and potentially over 65 feet in some of these areas, how does, what, what are some of the existing buildings in the city look like? So I took a look at a few of the buildings in the city. Um, I think I lost one of my slides somehow this afternoon, but the first building is 50 Washington Street. So 50 Washington Street is a 12 story building with the, uh, the height, which we, we have a pretty good estimation of is about 132 feet. So that's obviously a lot taller than anything um, that we're proposing, but just to give you a reference point, probably one of the taller buildings in the city, but that's kind of the scale of something like that. Something more recent and is closer in height to what we're talking about is the uh, new building constructed at right at the train station of one chestnut street that's a five to six story building so the a view on the bottom left is kind of if you're um, looking southeast and then this driveway here is actually the drive access to the train station and that building from grade on monroe street side to the top of the building is about 72 feet. So that gives you a little sense of the scale. This view over here is looking at it, kind of looking towards the Southwest. Here's Chestnut Street, and then obviously out in front is Monroe Street. So this is kind of in line with, with what could be uh, realized on the taller end of the spectrum of some of the new buildings we're talking about. Another building, which is a little newer building, a little smaller, but just to give you a similar sense of scale, this is the new construction at 230 East Avenue. Um, this is also a five to six story building, but it's a lower height of about 62 feet from peak down to the um, uh, street grade through there. So that, that's just to give you a little sense of scale when we're talking about things. The, the regulations, the draft zoning does have some, uh, give some different ways of calculating and, and, and regulating the loom effect of when you're butting up to residential areas. As you can see in this building and looking back at the building at Chestnut Street, so there's like a four story face at the street, but then when you get beyond the fourth floor, you have to step that building back. So there's that cutout you see through here. So what that does is help to reduce the, um, the looming effect at the street. So this, that was one way that was handled. That's the fashion that we've done it um, through similar uh, regulations, but the the draft zoning in working with UTO, they came up with a different methodology of how to measure and, and kind of cut down on that loom effect for those buildings. And I think that's all I had in terms of new slides. The other thing, um, if you wanted to review that I submitted at afterwards was uh, the question came up about the number of uh, potentially non-conforming properties as a result of the change of regarding the contractor yards, as well as the change for the properties that are currently zoned residential um, that could go to an industrial zone. So I did provide those maps and they are on the website, but I'm happy to review those in a little more detail if you have specific questions about those.
But I'm good. Thank you for providing us uh, the references that we discussed. Sure, and, and I can upload these to the, um, the the page that has the application material, so you can look. Uh, you know, you as well as the public can go back and take a peek. Yeah. Um, so what I was kind of thinking, you know, and again, happy to take any other questions for next step. I know there were still a few kind of areas that were unresolved in, in the draft text. I was going to, between now and your April 7th meeting, clean those up and give you a final package of materials and also um, do a little cleanup on the draft zoning maps. Do you get a little better sense of exactly the parcels? And I'll try to zoom in as much as possible and make them hopefully a little clearer. And then we could go through those at your April 7th meeting in more detail. And then if you're comfortable, we can then set a public hearing date for some time in May. We do have to refer the matter out to um, Connecticut Deep, Harbor Management, um, and I, I probably some few other folks need to get referred to as well. So we can start that process at your um, next meeting if you're comfortable. I have a question, Mike here. Go ahead, Mike. Um, Steve, if you can just explain briefly um, that a non-conforming property when it's sold can still maintain a non-conforming use as long as the use stays the same. I just want you to clarify that that's true. Correct, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So I, I did have a conversation with uh, um, one of the contractors last week and, and you know, we had a, that was a good discussion. He brought up some really good concerns of which, you know, I'm not um, sympathetic to. Um, but it, so if you think about, and I can pull an image back up, if you like one of these contractor yards, they, most of them are, you know, they're fully utilizing those properties. So they can continue to utilize those in the same fashion they're using them today without uh, the city taking away any of their rights. That, that can continue to happen. So their business as they're conducting it today can continue. Uh, one thing in talking with that individual, I said, you know, I wouldn't have any objections to if in the future, say you wanted to construct a new building on that property, um, you know, like a new warehouse building or a new storage building. I wouldn't, I, I, I think we could put a carve out in the regulations where you could put that new building in, you know, with the same site plan requirements that we have today that would allow them to, you know, make improvements to the business, but that building itself wouldn't have any negative impacts on the neighbors. So it's not like you're expanding out the yard space. You're just taking the yard space and making it into um, whether it's truck storage space or material storage or something like that. The one area where I think that, uh, you know, where technically you could be hampering somebody's business is if there was an uh, adjacent piece of property that was currently zoned uh, industrial one, and they wanted to purchase that property and expand their yard into that property, they wouldn't be allowed to do that in the future. So you are kind of freezing them for the bounds going forward for that kind of earth processing um, part of it. But they can continue to use what they have for property now uh, under the current zoning and, and continue to operate their business. Uh, thank you, that's a, a thorough answer. Uh, that I just kind of want to just, ask it so that uh, we were all clear that a non, what a non-conforming use does to an existing business. Is it, is it gonna shut it down? No. Is it going to kick it out? No. Is it going to stay? Maybe the neighbors aren't thrilled about that, but as long as they're using it as it's currently being used, uh, they can and they can sell it with that same use uh, uh, intact. Uh, but if the use changes, then it goes right to the updated zoning. And, and I guess I'm asking that another, I'm clarifying further what you said, Steve. So just confirm that if you don't mind. You scared him off. I did. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm either pitch black or I'm like standing on the sun with this, my lighting. Aspect. Well, uh, you, basically I was just repeating, but wanted to make clear that a, a non-conforming use is not eliminating or diminishing the current use and it can be sold with that use in place if they if a, a new owner wanted to maintain that use but if that use changes uh, then the new zoning kicks in 
Yeah, right. So if, if, if they change uses to a use that becomes more conforming, they can't go backwards to that prior use. Um, and the other thing I, I'd like to point out, and I think we did discuss this last time, was we did, with the, some of the other changes proposed, with allowing um, some increased height, allowing residential in certain areas, we are providing some other incentives to do things on the property that you currently can't do today. So it, it, I understand for certain specific current businesses that there could be concerns about um, kind of hand, hand tying their hands a little bit, but I think we've also provided incentives that I think in the long run actually increase the value of their properties. Uh, that's a very important point. Thank you. Steve, I'd like to add to this conversation a little bit. Um, I am like vehemently against as much as possible turning properties into legally non-conforming uses. While I agree um, with everything that you said, um, if there's an improvement on the property and it's destroyed and it costs more than 50% to rebuild, it can't be rebuilt. Anything that you have to explain to a bank or a buyer um, as a detriment on the property decreases its value. Um, so I am really against um, making things non-conforming that don't have to be. Um, I, I, I also have a comment in regards to grandfathering in those clauses. Um, we, you know, this community is, is evolving. There's a lot of growth in, in this community. Mm -hmm. and, and to have the um, grandfather um, um, open, open-ended, built into, you know, any, any um, property that's passed forward, I think may serve detrimental to the community. I think that, you know, any policies need to keep up with the time. And so if you have a, a one business selling to another, um, this other business may have um, practices um, that, that, um, that, that may violate um, environment, that may violate, um, you know, it, 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 any, um, any, any factors that will negatively impact the community, but therefore, because it's grandfathered in, they won't be held accountable. So, so we don't legally have, I mean, should, I should clarify that a little bit. We, we don't have the legal ability to remove their grandfathered status. So even if we change the zone to completely prohibit like five or six uses that are currently there, those businesses can legally continue to operate no matter what the zoning is in the city. The only way that, that they could, that could change is if the city tried to take the property from that individual, which is not something that the city has any appetite or indication they would do. We just, the, the non-conforming laws just wouldn't, wouldn't allow us to change that use. So as long as that use continues, they can um, maintain that use. I, I think the, the trickiest part of this is that um, we didn't really address this until now. I mean, the, I mean, a lot of things happen in South Norwalk over time and, and it was the home to heavy manufacturing and, and, and you know, in some ways got a lot of uses pushed into it that probably weren't appropriate for the area, but they were put there regardless. So now we're kind of through this exercise, we're trying to um, undo some of the, the you know, locations that were probably not appropriate. So we're kind of, we're making the sausage, which is kind of messy. So it, it's not meant to cure everything overnight, but you know, the, the, the plan and the, the plan recognizes that a lot of these uses are important for the city to maintain. It's just a question of over time, where should they best be located? And it may take 50 years to completely reincorporate a, a whole neighborhood again in some instances and, and remove some of these non-conforming uses. But I think at least what we're recommending is over time, we think this is the, the best approach. Well, in the process, can we factor in some good neighbor policies? Oh, definitely. And I think that the standards that um, standards that get built in in terms of screening, anything like that are, are easy to adjust over time. And, and to your original point, which I forgot to address, if if say um, business A uh, sells to business B, but then business B is not um, 
a good neighbor, then that becomes a city enforcement issue where we need to um, you know, put him in violation for violating specific aspects of the regulations. Thank you, Steve. And I, I actually second JJ's point as well, that enforcement is important. And that one yard you showed as an example of the half acre, the 56, I think, Chestnut Street, uh, that had no screening in the front. And you said, well, they have screening in other parts. And my natural question was, why not? <laughs> you know, why can't we just make them go in and put screening in? It would look so much better. And especially Chestnut Street is, you know, is improving and, uh, 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 you know, there's development down the other end. I'm not, you know, saying that's all good, except I'm just saying that uh, there's a lot more people in the neighborhood. And uh, I'd love to not see that one use, but uh, I think the enforcement is important. And the other thing uh, I want to just add, if I don't, because this is a discussion, so I wanted to add to an answer to uh, JJ uh, in that the incentives that Steve mentioned like adding extra uses, like extra residential use, is, is an incentive for some of these property owners, I would imagine, that's how the market works, to sell the property to an, a, a new use, uh, because they're, not, they're now going to be monetize, wanting to monetize their property. And in so doing, that is using the carrot approach, as I, you know, I mentioned earlier in another application, but carrot versus stick. The carrot approach is to you know, make a, a, home, a property owner want to think about selling because their property value is going to be higher now. And that, in a way, is, is a way to incentivize uh, improvements and, and removing some of these more egregious uh, you know, uses that bother the neighbors. If we're having a discussion about it, Thank you, guess Mike. what about the property that I bought um, about 19 years ago in South Norwalk? I bought a I bought a three family on Wilson Avenue and it was a uh, restricted industrial. The appraiser said three family, the Phil Carter said three family, the realtor said three family, I bought it. I started doing repairs on one of the units. I pulled a permit and they told me that it's a non-conforming two family that I had to get out the apartment and the tenant would have to leave. Um, with that being said, you look at the Phil card now and it says two family. So here I am on this property over half a million dollars about 18 years ago, and I had to sell it for 300,000. So who takes a $200,000 cut, the city or the owner? So there's, there's, certain, there's certain things that we have done that improved a lot, but on a one-off basis, I know we're talking about business lots, but there's a lot of residential homes that people are buying um, that you know, if there was something in place that they can identify, and not make that mistake, and they don't have to carry that burden would definitely be ideal. So I don't know how that fits into this equation, but I still have the taste in my mouth from 17 years ago taking that cut yeah, on that that's, property. That's, that's you the kind of separate, not really separate. part of it. Yeah, but just by talking about it, Steve, just, just the taste just comes right back. 247 Wilson Avenue, ah, bite. And to build on what JJ was saying, Steve, I would, wonder if there's more we can do with the good neighbor policies that i mean it's a time that we're looking at the industrial area industrial areas have big impact to the community to the environment and i think it's worth taking a step and seeing if there's more that we should do there um and i can imagine a couple of minutes, a couple of things that i'm sure you have better ideas than i do but both from a health factor perspective to the community and also just greater environmental impact that that those lots tend to have, I think there's, it would bolster, it would just serve us well to consider bolstering that now. Yeah, I, I mean, I th we, we've kind of focused the conversation a lot on the contractor yards, but I mean, if, if you read the kind of the impetus for the report for changing the zone, like particularly changing, looking at the parking standard and looking at the height standard, it's try to attract the kind of businesses that need those taller floor plates, particularly mm -hmm. on the ground floor. So that's kind of part of the impetus to do that. And, it, and the, you know, the businesses that, you know, the plan real is envisioning is really not something that's going to be um, any kind of pollutant issue with the neighbors. Um, it's not gonna be a, a large, you know, necessarily a truck generator in and out, but every business like that has some truck traffic, but it's not meant to be something that's a detriment to the neighborhood. It's meant to be a job grower, um, you know, 
identifying uses that are positive for the future. Yeah, totally. And I think we can just go further. I'm just saying that that's, I hear that and I think there could be more. Okay. Steve, Steve if, I, if, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was wondering um, with, with regard to the properties that exist now, whether they're conforming or non-conforming, um, <clears throat> I was th thinking specifically about that picture you showed um, with what I'm assuming is a dirt pile that was covered with a tarp that was covered with old tires. Um, is, there, is there some way on those kind of uses that rule changes can be made or clarified or something that they you know, can't look like that? I always think I, about, you know, when Vinnie Penna came in and took over that yard that was such a dump and it looked better than a city park when he was done, but still functional. Yeah, I think you know, the, um, and, and sometimes the, with the yards that are older, the, they were probably there before the screening requirements were put in. Um, so it, it, we do have a, a limit on the pile height. So theoretically from the street level, you could grow arborvitae or whatever the typical plan of choice is to, to screen those out. I mean, there, there are, as the, the city develops around those yards and you know, the buildings aren't gonna get shorter, they're just gonna get taller. Exactly. People, they're always gonna look down on that. So, I mean, you can to a certain extent, but I don't know if you'll be able to eliminate it from everybody's view shed. I, I have a comment about that example that uh, Richard, you just brought up. Uh, because I know the owner of that property looked into putting trees around it. You know, trees certainly would have helped, but there was no way to squeeze street trees in on that narrow existing sidewalk uh, and uh, on all sides. Uh, the, the sidewalk is too, th there's no uh, snow shelf and the trees would be like in the middle of the sidewalk. So. Uh, but that the owner, I do know the owner uh, uh, in a conversation I had years ago, uh, because I was tree liaison for South Norwalk. I was looking to plant trees. I planted about 150 along Martin Luther King, and you know, various corners and empty lots and whatever. Uh, and we, uh, you know, I went down there and I was like, oh, this would be great to have trees around this, but they just would not fit. But uh, in, in other cases, uh, we should look into green screening for sure. It makes a huge difference. If you can imagine trees around that, it would have- Or, or, or a mural. Why don't we talk to the Arts Commission and have someone design a mural? Yeah, yeah there's another idea, yeah. Beautify. That's right. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, these are all good conversations. Uh, let's, um, let's move on uh, in the agenda. Um, I think Tammy had a comment, sorry. Oh, I apologize. Go ahead, Tammy. That's okay, thank you. Um, one thing that I've been thinking about amongst, I, I agree with my fellow commissioners um, with regard to environmental issues, dust, dirt, pollutants, et cetera. Um, the homeowner that just came before us for Seven Twilight had something on the map called a rumble strip that is supposed to remove the dirt or to whatever sticks to uh, the truck tires that are going into his property or out onto the street. And can we enforce those sorts of things, say down along Meadow Street, where you have all of those uh, heavy industrial uses? Because that road is constantly filthy and the dust and dirt from those properties blowing right across the street over to the um, Norwalk Housing Authority property. I'm just curious, do we enforce things like that? Or is that something that's only because he's building a new construction, now somebody thought of it? The same thing like that one on Chestnut Street, Steve, that one with the chain link fence, there's no screening there. I mean, so can the city go in and say, listen, guys, you got to put some Arbor Bitey in here? Or is that just a wish? Um, maybe. Uh, so the, 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 the residential house one, so that the anti-tracking pad is meant to deal with construction. So it's like a, there's gravel in the, you know, the tire treads are supposed mm -hmm. to slough off the gravel as uh, the, the, the uh, sediment from their tires as it goes off. I think, and Michelle, if maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think our 
requirements for the contractor yards is they have to have a paved lot. So they basically, if they're tracking dirt in and out, they need to sweep the streets, um, you know, water down the yard, clean it up and then maintain that. They're not supposed to track any of that into the street for the yard without the screening. We could enforce it if at one time, as I mentioned, if, if that yard has been there for a hundred years, then no, we can't do anything about that, the aesthetics of it now, unless, unless somebody said it looks blighted. But if they were required to at one time provide a landscaping plan or landscaping screening and they since lost that landscaping, we could require them to go back in and reinstall that. But if, if they were there for a hundred years and they never were required to do, we can't retroactively ask them. Okay. Well, I don't know how long the joys and the other businesses along there and the transfer station have been there, but they certainly don't prevent all sorts of dirt and debris from going out onto Meadow Street. It's filthy and it's filthy all the time. And the city street sweeper goes over there, but you know, that's like penny uh, too late. What's that expression? You know, a penny late and a pound foolish or whatever that is. But anyway, maybe I digress. And if I do, I apologize. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move. Uh, let's move on to uh, the minutes uh, for our March third meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Darius um, moves. Tammy second. Uh, Tammy seconds. JJ seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's do it by a raise of hands. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions for people who may not have been to last meeting? No? Okay. Brian extinct. Okay. Brian had his hand up, he is in. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, Steve, I'm gonna turn it back to you because there are still a couple of uh, other issues we need to discuss. Sure, and I've got one item to bring up um, for discussion there. You may have seen an article in a couple of the papers. I can't remember when, maybe it was last fall about the uh, potential for a performing arts school to come into the Wall Street area. Uh, they've been looking around for homes and they're uh, trying to find kind of like a space for a dormitory. So they were looking at one parcel um, in particular that the use isn't allowed under the current zoning. Um, it's, it's just not, we don't have a definition for a dormitory and I think we have addition, we have college as an allowed use. So I think I could make the stretch that if you have a college, you have dormitories, but the college school part of it will not be on the same property, at least initially as where the dormitory would go. So I talked to them and I haven't got confirmation back from them yet, but I said, I, I would discuss with the commission there appetite to consider a text change to allow um, a dormitory in, and this is, I'm talking about on East Avenue in the East Ave Village District, where you could have a dormitory as a separate use in its own definition, um, and then have a parking standard that goes along with that. That way it's clean, there's not any, um, you know, we're not trying to shoehorn something in where it really doesn't fit into the existing definition. So I didn't know what any, if anybody had thoughts on, um, on pursuing that or, or how they would view that? I, I have no um, problem um, moving forward with that. Um, although I, I find it a little strange uh, to have the uh, dormitory uh, separate, so far separated from the uh, college itself. Uh, but that seems to be an issue in this case. Um, I remember that the POCD uh, has strongly recommended uh, that we try to attract uh, a college or a university to Norwalk. So I, I, I think that would be positive for uh, the city. Um, and if uh, this is needed in order to make it happen, um, I think uh, I, I certainly, all things being equal, could get behind that. I would support it as well. Could you say where both of the locations are, the school and then this proposed dorm? Um, I, on East I, Avenue and where in South Norwalk is the school? So the, it, they're looking on Wall Street for the school 
in on East Ave for the, the dorm. And I can't say just because I don't know if they've actually closed on any property. So I don't want to kind of interject that into the middle of their real estate transaction. Oh, okay. Thank you. That could definitely alter alter the dynamics of the sale. So I prefer so not you, to. I think it would, it would bring much needed vitality to the area. But we would Do be it. approving something that we don't know where it is. Um, not necessarily. Uh, I think to get the, the text change would not necessarily have to be uh, parcel specific. So I could discuss that with them as, as, if they decide to move forward. Did you say this is a college level program? Correct. I mean, I'll, I'll try to find the uh, at the uh, article and I can forward that on to you guys too. Uh, Darius, did I see your hand up? You looked like you were going to speak. Oh, I was, yeah, I was just wondering how large uh, of Steve, if you had an idea of how large the program would be or any idea of what it seemed from your conversations. I, I think they're start they're going to start small and scale up as they it gets established. I think that's their plan. I don't think it's going to be, you know, it's not, we're not, I don't think it's going to be UConn Stanford to start. So if that gives you sense. Well, would they be using the right. theater down there on Wall Street? Is that their home base? I'm not positive about that. Steve, do they already have a presence in Norwalk? Not as a school, no. Are they already a school somewhere else? <laughs> Let me, I, I might I, I might go, be going beyond my uh, ability to give you a good answer. That's not going to be presumptuous. <laughs> yeah, thank All you. Right. Okay, so I, I'll go ahead. And this is unrelated to the vocational school near Van Zandt, correct? Correct. So I, Steve, when you mentioned we didn't have a definition of dormitory. Of course, the first thing I thought of was boarding house, because I know we do. Yeah. And I'm sure you thought of this, knowing you and what you know. But uh, I, I'm just we're going to read it right this second, because I'm wondering why this could not fit unless they want to go larger than this. But this is between three persons, any dwelling or portion thereof in which at least three persons, but not more than 20, are housed or boarded without separate kitchen facilities where meals may be provided. So. Uh, would a, a, a dormitory of less than 20 people fit as a boarding house? Do we already have a definition for it? Yeah, we, we looked at that and that's something we could just look at tweaking to allow that. Um, it, I don't believe it's allowed in the zone either way. So we'd still need to do some kind of text amendment. But I did, um, I asked the consultant doing the zone, zoning if they had a definition of dormitory and they gave me one and they gave me a parking standard. So if we wanted to go that route, we. We have a couple options, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I do know it's in, you probably, yeah, I know you were in Stanford for a while. They turned an apart, I think it was an apartment yeah. building or an office building into a dormitory on uh, Mill, Mill River Park, right? Downtown? Yeah, office, yep. yeah, office to apartment. Uh, yeah, so, we raised the whole thing. Yeah, uh, anyway, that was a different scale, I'm, I'm assuming. But uh, anyway, I, I would support you know, anything that can bring a school in. Uh, I want to see a marine college down at Manresa Island. I'll just throw that in, but this is not what this is about. All right, Steve, is that what you were looking for? Yeah, just to get your go ahead to, to move it forward if they're still, um, that's what they're interested in. I'll circle back with them and hopefully if they agree, then I'll start that process. Okay. Now, Steve, um, uh, if you don't bring it up, I'm going to bring it up under uh, commissioners. So, uh, you're more familiar with it than I am. Uh, and uh, that is the legislation. Um, um, why don't um, why don't you give the background? We we've been through this at least once uh, before. Sure. So there's a new um, there's a new house bill that is being considered by the legislature regarding local zoning. Um, and I'm going to try to find it. I know I've got it open somewhere. Um, in a nutshell, kind of this, this came about, I did find it. Let me just try to pull it up on my screen. This, there was something similar that came out last year that ended up not going forward. Um, and I think it was just, it was a little too comprehensive, but in a nutshell, what they recommended was any mass transit facility um, 
you have to allow a certain density as of right within that half mile radius around a train station or a major bus station. Um, and that was really, you know, you can imagine that the implications of something like that. Um, we looked at that um, legislation in house and did a mapping exercise. And while if you think about, you know, I, I, we can go through each train station or the, or the bus station um, in depth, but even the South Norwalk station, if you go to the east, to the north or the south, it's kind of considered, um, you know, it's a TOD area. We've, you know, we've looked at expanding the housing choices in those areas and, and adding density in those areas. But when you get to the West, particularly on the other side of um, MLK, the, the topography changes substantially. You're, you're, there's probably a, at least a 30 foot grade difference between that. And then the neighborhood composition is completely different over there. So would that new zoning now tell us we have to provide um, much higher density um, housing at that location, even though it's not necessarily the most walkable area to get to the train station from there if you're trying to cross MLK plus deal with that um, grade change. Another area to think about would be um, North 7, we've, which we've been talking with the, the Merritt 7 station with the applicant. Right to the immediately to the south, to the north, and right to the east, we've been talking about some pretty high density residential development. The, the, the legislation talks about they want you to maintain 15 units to the acre, but our TOD zoning is at 87 to, units to the acre. So it's significantly higher. But when you think about the North 7 area, when you get on the other side of um, Main Ave, the grade goes way up and you have predominantly single family housing. To the west of that, you've got Route 7, and then you have, you know, you're into one acre zoning. So does it make sense to try to say this whole area should be a TOD zone just because it's within a half mile? I, I think they've um, provided too prescriptive of language. Um, let me see if I can pull it up to say that. They, they did, with the new changes, they did um, try to address that to some extent. I got it. So if you look at, can you guys see that? Is that legible? Yep. Okay, if you look at B, and this is where the language gets a little bit trickier than the old language. Um, they, they talk about looking at the gross density across all the stations. And they want you, they, they do provide the ability to, um, car, ah, sorry, that went a lot faster than I intended. They do allow you the ability to carve out um, certain areas. So if you have steep slopes, if you have flood hazard areas, you can carve out the roadways and, and so forth. Um, or if you're in a coastal area, you can carve out the coastal areas. So in order for, so I, I had my staff kind of map this out. And, and in some areas we might be okay. In some, I just can't positively say we're okay because to, to extract all those steep slopes um, the wetland areas, the, the um, highways and everything, it takes a lot more uh, mapping exercise. To, it's, it's a lot more work to go through that, that part of the exercise. So we haven't quite done that yet. I, I think the language as proposed, the intent is good, but I think it's just too prescriptive and just kind of putting a blanket. You're within a half mile, so now you're in the TOD area. You know, if you think about Lastly, and I'll be quiet, if you think about the East Norwalk um, amendments that were enacted last year, we didn't, we, we started out with that half mile radius, but then we looked at it from a, um, a land use perspective and, and, and try to analyze it based on where the street grid is, what the um, composition of the existing neighborhood is, and we came up with a linear pattern versus just this random circle. So I understand the point of the circle is how far people are actually willing to walk, but that doesn't always mean that that's the right approach to um, proper planning. I think they're just, it's too much of a, an academic exercise they went through versus providing some real context and some real um, land use analysis to, to, the, um, to, the, to the exercise. So that's kind of where the legislation stands. I don't know the outcome of any votes or if it's going to go forward. I know um, obviously the, the smaller communities are gonna just fight this tooth and nail, 
And at the end of the day, maybe when we run our mapping, we're, we're kind of exempt from all these things, even, even considering what's going on at the Rowayton train station. Um, but we're, we're, we're not quite at that point yet. Hopefully within a week or so, I'll have better numbers to share with you on, on how we break out, but that's kind of where we're at at the moment. I, I think the easiest approach to this <clears throat> is to simply indicate that it should not apply to those communities that meet the 10% uh, requirement um, for uh, affordable housing. And we more than meet that. So, uh, I mean, frankly, that's a not so simple to implement, but um, uh, we shouldn't be under, the target audience. Simple to understand. Um, just a, a, a small change in language would um, would leave a, a city like Norwalk um, out of this uh, fight. Yeah, and I, I'm happy to follow up with um, either with some mm -hmm. one of our representatives to find out the status and the schedule for the bill and where it's going to go through. If you decided you wanted to make comments, the mayor had reached out as well, and he had some concerns based off just the initial language. I, I think, like I said, a lot of times with this, the intent is good, um, the goals are good, but it's just you can't paint such a broad brush based on just the the dynamics on the ground in each one of these locations. It just doesn't always make sense to go that that kind of approach. I have a question. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Steve, when I think one of the conditions was if you achieve 15 uh, units per acre, then you no longer, a developer can, can no longer come in with, a, you know, uh, with a large project. I think there, that's the threshold, isn't that correct? Right, I, I think what it's saying is, um, and I, 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 the law department's looking at this as well, just to make sure my interpretation is correct. So if you take, we have um, one, two, three, four train stations, um, and the bus bus terminal. I think we have, yeah, we have four train stations and the bus terminal. So if you take that, um, the half mile radius equates to 503 acres. So if you take that um, 25, roughly 2,500 acre area and apply your zoning standards as they currently exist, and that current zoning gets you on average above 15 units an acre, then I think you are exempt. I think that's what you're asking. Yeah, yes. And uh, what I wasn't clear on, and maybe you, I mean, maybe you don't know the answer because I think there's still so many questions around this, is are, are, when they're figuring that calculation, are they counting roads and parks and everything else uh, in that, like, you know, when you were doing an actual pro, uh, uh, a development on a particular parcel, that dwelling unit per acre applies only to that parcel. We know that. But when you're looking at an area that's a half mile radius, are they counting? Because it would stretch it out. Like if you just counted the buildable land that's privately owned, that's developed and excluded all roads and parks and uh, railroads and highways and everything else, then we could have achieved probably 15 units per acre in a lot of our areas around our train stations already. Cause I'm looking at where my neighborhood is a C zone, two family, zone next to a D zone, which is multifamily, you know, and these aren't high scale buildings, but if you think of Fairfield Avenue, Taylor Avenue um, and Flax Hill, they're combined with condo buildings and we would, we would achieve 15 units per acre automatically right now, but are, are they, you know, including the roads? That's, that's, an, that's a question I thought of right away. I was like, what are they including in that calculation? Yeah, they do, they do allow you to back those out. And I think in a couple of areas, we already, um, even if we include the roads and in all the other items they let you exclude, I think we already exceed that standard. Um, I'm just not 100% positive. And I, I don't know, that it, the question is whether if we don't, what's the burden of proof on verifying all those numbers? I know they didn't right. run any analysis to that detail. Well, I, I agree with Lou on this. Uh... We, we've been working so hard at this for years of building affordable housing and reaching our 10% threshold that we should be rewarded with, uh, <laughs> you know, at least being exempt from 
uh, you know, are being treated differently than other communities, which have made a, uh, you know, you could argue have made, and I think the evidence is there, concerted effort to keep out uh, affordable housing and density. So, uh, you know, the, it's a broad brush that they're painting all the communities with. Steve, typically these things need to be acted on uh, fairly quickly. Um, do you know where it is in the, the legislative process? No, but I can reach out tomorrow and see if I can get an answer fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, we may have to act if we're going to act uh, before the April 7th meeting. Yeah, I can, you know, worst case, if, if it's something before that, you, you, if you felt strongly, we could definitely look at a special meeting to just deal with that one issue. Okay, so Steve, it, Steve, this, is, this is proposed legislation in the house, right? It's that's not, my understanding. It, so we, we have two house representatives in Norwalk, right? Yes, Stephanie it, Thomas and- um, Perry I'm Wood on the other Dayton. side of town. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, who was the second? Terry Wood on the- on the No, we Park. have we have more. Um, yeah, so we, have, we have Lucy Dathan, Stephanie Thomas, Travis Sims, Chris Barone, and Terry Wood. Right. Oh, okay. I, I, I would start with Terry, Lucy, or Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you. And it's yeah, we should be able to get an answer pretty quick. Right. And it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to keep Bob Bob Duff in the loop. Yeah, last year we had a conversation with, with Senator Duff around the when the legislation was pushing through. Is it worth reaching out and having that conversation sooner than later, Steve? I know I don't think it's out of committee yet, so it's we're still a little bit like commenting on things that are unknown, but it may be worth to start to lay that groundwork again. So that was a fruitful conversation. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll usually I, I prefer to go through um, the mayor's office for that kind of conversation. But yeah, they, they do. Like I said, they do have some concerns and wanted some more facts. So I can run more numbers and then have that conversation started at the same time. OK. And, you know, if if we're on the same page uh, with the mayor, um, we can make it a joint push. Okay. Do, can you refresh my memory, Steve? For? Oh, sorry, Tammy. I'm sorry, excuse me. Lou, what is it you're pushing for? Uh, I, I'm pushing to get us out of this as uh, simply as possible. Okay, uh, thank you. Got it, thank you. And, and I would support that concept that you just mentioned. We opted out of something last year. What was that, Steve? I'm just trying to remember what we chose to opt, well, there's some state uh, there's a there's a couple of things we have still have to deal with. One is the um, accessory dwelling units, um, right? And then this legislation also has similar language about the minimum parking standards, which, I, again, I think they just blanket everything and they don't really. It's almost like an academic exercise versus a um, real world exercise. And when we opted out, we knew we were going to come back and address it. We just didn't want to be beholden to standards that were not going to be uh, more local, locally generated. Is that, isn't that correct? Yes. And the, the way they write that opt out provision is if you don't opt out, this is your standard and you can't readdress it the way I read that. So it's like you, if you ever want to have flexibility in the future, you better address it at, up front before the deadline passes. Well, I, I support all the work they're trying to do at Desegregate Connecticut. And I, you know, I, am, I totally understand all of the issues of housing supply, housing crisis that we're in, the you know shrinking of the state population, all of, all of those things make sense. And there are a lot of communities that try very hard to keep people out. We know that. The, and the that's problem, what this is trying to solve. And we're not one of those communities. The problem, the problem is they're they're trying to do it on a one size fits all. Yeah. yeah. And that really just doesn't work. Steve Clevin, can you please forward that? email because if if you did send it to us already i apologize i didn't see it that list with all of those points that you were just had on the screen oh well I'll, yeah the draft legislation i can forward that yeah thank you Steve, did you say there's another parking um law out there this this session it's in it's in that bill so that same that same um 
I didn't go back and look at the prior wording to see if it was the exact same, but the same concept gotcha. was in there, like one space per studio, one space for this. Right. Um, right. And we opted out because we met it or executed it. We well, gotcha. we we haven't done anything yet. We have um we have to do something at some point. That was the theory, yeah. But we're already doing it, but, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, that's your point. You know I mean? it, it, it's like all of these things we're doing already. Uh, and uh, But they're taking the stick approach, <laughs> you know, to bring that theme back. I don't know why I keep thinking of that, but uh, it's just, a, it, it's a stick approach that we don't need in Norwalk, basically. Um, are there, <clears throat> excuse me, comments? Um, from any other uh, commissioners? Anything else you want to bring up? I have a question that's not related to this thread. Is, do you want new topics now? We're just sure. Go stick ahead. on this. Is there anything with the Merit 7 that they didn't show up today that's of import or just they weren't ready for the next conversation? No, um, I actually had a, um, uh, Bob Briswitz and I met with them for mm -hmm. about an hour today. Um, and they had they, they you know did a little bit of update, but we you know at the end of the day we just recommended you know and discussed with them that it really didn't make sense to just come back on the agenda if they didn't have more of the items that we discussed last time. So um, Bob and I are meeting again tomorrow that to go over what they 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 came back with us with an email saying we under heard from you that you wanted to see these items addressed um, and asked us to provide. The kind of specificity they we are expecting in for, to address those items. So we're going to get back to them tomorrow, and hopefully, at eight on April seventh, they'll be back with more detail as you've requested. And then you'll be at a point where hopefully you can set a public hearing date and then um, move the item. Thanks for that. Okay. Anything else from uh, any of the other commissioners? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion uh, to adjourn. Darius, Darius, Darius moves. Uh, second. second. Uh, and Hector, second. Hector seconds. Show of hands, all those in favor. Looks like it's unanimous. Good night, everybody. Stay Good well. Night, all. See you on, all right. on the Thank you, Steve. Bye, Dave. Good night.